Today we are breaking down five most important fundamentals every drone mapper needs to understand. From pixel precision to proper planning, we have got you covered. So let's dive in. Number 1 GST which means ground sampling distance. This is basically how much ground area is represented by a single pixels in your image. Here is an example. If your GSD is 2 cm, then each pixels in your photo represents a 2 cm by 2 cm square on the actual ground. So, a low GSD means higher resolution, more details and more accurate measurements. What affect GST? First, drone altitude. The higher you fly, the higher are or worst your GST. Second, camera sensor size and focal length. Third, image resolution. More megapixels generally is equals to lower GST. So why GST is important? If you are mapping a field for agriculture, you might be okay with a GST of 5 to 10 cm. But for construction, survey or 3D modeling, you will want it closer to 1 to 2 cm for real accuracy. Pro tip, always balance your GSD with flight time and data processing power. Lower GSD means more images and more data to crunch which increases your processing time. Number 2 ground control points which also called gcp these are clearly marked location on the ground with known dgps coordinates and plays a critical role in ensuring absolute accuracy if you're not sure about what absolute accuracy means you can follow our previous videos link in the description box here how it works you place several gcps throughout your survey area before your drone flight after the flight you use softwares to match features in the drone images to these known points this anchors your map to the real world coordinates which help you to achieve absolute accuracy so why to use gcps in your project number one they reduce positional error especially in vertical axis number two they are essential for survey grade mapping number three they can correct gps drift in your drones onboard system real world examples Let's say you are mapping a road for civil engineering project. Without GCPs, your map might be off by a meter or more. With GCPs, you are often accurate down to just a few centimeters. Number 3. Image Overlap Overlap is the amount of shared coverage between consecutive images taken by the drone. When mapping, you typically want 70-80% to 80 front overlap. Front overlap means in the direction the drone is flying. 60-70% to 70 side overlap which means between the rows. Why does overlap matter? Because drone mapping software uses a technique called photogrammetry. It needs to see the same points on the ground from multiples angle to build a accurate map or a 3D model. If you don't have enough overlap, your project could fail or results in error and gaps in the final map. Pro tip, windy day, bumpy flight or you are flying in a dense vegetation, increase your overlap to 85% front and 70% side just to be safe. Number 4. 
Nadir versus oblique image. Nadir images are taken directly down, 90 degree to the ground. These are perfect for creating ortho photos, those crisp top down maps we all love. Oblique images, on the other hand, are captured at an angle often 45 degree or so. They allow you to see building sites, cliffs, towers, anything vertical. PLU cases, doing a 2D land survey, creating a detailed 3D models of a construction site or an old building. Oblique images are a must and many software platforms even allow you to combine both types. Modern drone likes DJI Mavic 3 Enterprise or Phantom 4 RTK supports automated capture of both nadir and oblique images in a single flight plan. Number 5. What is a KML file? KML stands for Keyhole Markup Language and it is basically a file format that contains geographic data you can open in softwares like Google Earth or QGIS. What is inside a KML file? Number 1. GPS coordinate for points, path or polygons. 2. Image overlays. 3. Altitude data. 4. Annotation or labels. In drone mapping, KMLs are used for Number 1. Planning flights over specific areas. Number 2. Sharing project boundaries with client or teams. Third, importing or exporting map data to other platforms. Examples. Say you get a site boundary from a client as a KML. You can load into your drone flight planner and automatically generate a custom flight missions that fit exactly within that boundary. Mastering this will take your drone mapping game from beginner to pro in no time. So that's all for today. If you found this video helpful, hit like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.